Good morning, beloved children of God. It's my hope that you're all doing well, that you are practicing, of course, washing your hands uh, frequently, practicing the safe social distances, and of course, that you all use one of these when you're going out into public. Remember, this is to protect those around you, not you, but to protect those that you come in contact with. This was made by a good friend of ours, Daria Mason. Elaine has matching ones too. I want to share that some of you uh, realize that the wrong link was sent to, to a previous Sunday for Easter Sunday. That is something we cannot help. For some reason, uh, YouTube and the company behind it, Google, uh, misconstrued something. We're hoping that that was only happening for this last Sunday. And for this Sunday coming up, it won't happen. We always do our best to make sure that the, this sermon, uh, worship, is ready to go at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning with the right link. Also, some of you might have caught a faux pas on the last Sunday, and that's okay. I don't mind making those. It adds a little life to worship. But we were singing happy birthday to all those having a birthday in August. Certainly, this is the month of April. I got my A's mixed up. So please know that all of you who had your birthdays in April, we were singing to you. Everybody knew that. Okay? All right. Well, friends, as we worship God this morning, let's make sure that we give God our best. Amen? Amen. Let's now open with prayer. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, Easter was such a high point. We walk through the weeks of Lent and then boldly march with Jesus into Jerusalem. Our steps hesitated and faltered during Holy Week, when we ate with our Lord and then ran from his crucifixion. It was so hard for us to really believe in the miraculous event of Easter, when our beloved Lord was raised from the dead. We, like Thomas, wonder if it was real or something made up from desperate longing. Help us to listen to your words with our hearts and our ears. Remind us that the Lord brings his peace to all. For we ask it in his name. Amen. Now we continue in our sermon series with the heart of the matter. And the scripture is from John chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. I invite you now to hear these words from the Gospel of John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who is called the twelve, the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told them, We have seen the Lord. And when he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. And although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to them, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. May the church hear what the Holy Spirit is trying to tell us this day. So, 
instead of going out into the world and proclaiming that Jesus is alive, Jesus is risen, he's raised from the dead, let's celebrate, let's go through all of Jerusalem doing this, let's go up to Galilee, let's go around as far as we can go and share this great news, right? No. What we find are these disciples after hearing that and, and finally understanding that Jesus is raised from the dead, although not sure exactly what that means yet, they're shut in. You might say they are sheltered down. But it's not from any kind of virus. Rather, it's from fear. Fear of the Jews. Now, fearing of the Jews, it's not necessarily to the Jewish people, but it references those who, who are standing apart and, uh, from Jesus, that they don't accept him as the Messiah, the Son of God. And so they're afraid. They're afraid that perhaps they'll get dragged kicking and screaming, perhaps, uh, down the streets, that they will have to haul a cross, that they would even be crucified. That would be the worst case. The other possibility, they would be driven out of Jerusalem and, and they'd have to go back home to Galilee and, and figure out what to do with their lives. But they're in this room shut. It's into this fear that Jesus shows himself to his friends. And with these beautiful words, peace be with you, Jesus helps them to relax, to calm down, and to experience that peace that only Jesus can give. Remember previously in John's Gospel, when Jesus and his disciples were gathered for that meal on that Thursday evening, uh, there's the foot washing, there's the command to love one another. And in chapter 14, Jesus begins a long discourse all the way through chapter 17. And it is in this discourse that Jesus does his best to prepare his disciples for the events that will later unfold. It is in John chapter 14, verses 25 through 27, where Jesus says, I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. So Jesus now, with the disciples in that room, shares that peace. It is a peace that the, the Apostle Paul says, a peace that surpasses all understanding. So Jesus breathes on them. He breathes on them. And this is what Leonard Sweet in his book Quantum Spirituality, a postmodern apologetic, calls, he calls this breathing the kiss of God. He writes, The human species has been kissed twice by the divine. It is the first kiss brought us breath and birth. The second kiss brought us rebirth and second breath. This is put in Quantum Spirituality Again, the first kiss of God quickened us to come alive. Adam was God's first kiss. The second God, kiss of God quickened us to come alive in Christ and to be born anew, born of the Spirit, as mentioned in John 3, 8. So Jesus is God's second kiss, or in the words of Bernard of Clairvaux, Jesus is God's kiss. The Spirit is the breath of God in the body of the church. Remember this from Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Then the Lord God formed man from the dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. Humanity becomes alive, and in sharing this post-resurrection story, John is helping us to understand that we Two can have a rebirth through the Spirit. Jesus kisses us. In one of John Wesley's most classic sermons, The New Birth, Wesley draws graphically on the Genesis vocabulary of breathing and respiration to describe the meaning of regeneration and being born again. 
Wesley writes, God is continually breathing, as it were, upon his soul, and his soul is breathing unto God. Grace is descending into his heart, and prayer and praise ascending into heaven. It is by this intercourse between God and man, I'll have to say women too, but this is the way it was written back in the 18th century. This fellowship with the Father and the Son is by a kind of respiration. The life of God in the soul is sustained, and the child of God grows up till he comes to that, quote, full measure in the stature of Christ. So it is a, a remembering this gift of peace and empowerment that comes today for us in the church by what we call passing of the peace. The sharing of the peace of Christ is a part of who we are in Christ. It is our identity. How many other groups do you know that when they say gather together that they say peace be with you? I mean, I'm not saying that they might not be there, but the church, when we worship together, we say peace be with you and also with you. Reverend Don, Dr. Don Chesser writes this, We've all observed our European brothers and sisters greeting one another with kisses on each cheek, right? And we've witnessed the French performing the Faire la Bise, in which two people quickly touch cheeks on each side, but actually they kiss the air and not the cheeks. Our neighbors across the pond all do this, although it is more common in Eastern, Central, and Southern Europe and especially in Mediterranean cultures than in Northern Europe. So this practice of greeting with a kiss to each cheek is not only widespread and common in many cultures in our day and time, it is a practice that goes very far back in human history. Cheek kissing was a common form of greeting in the ancient Mediterranean world, including among our Jewish and Christian forebears. The New Testament attests to the early Christian community taking this common practice and giving it new meaning, much in the way they took objects common to daily life, such as wine, bread, and water, and attaching ritual meaning to them, rendering the sacramental out of what once was profane. The kiss of peace or passing of peace fits into this category. It is not a sacrament, but neither it is simply a form of ordinary secular greeting when it is shared in the context of a Christian community. In the New Testament writings of Paul, we read these, Greet one another with a holy kiss. This is from Romans 16, 16, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 20, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, 12. Or, greet all the brothers and sisters with a holy kiss from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 6. And finally, in verse, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 14, it's paraphrased in a slightly different way. Greet one another with a kiss of love. Of course, we remember, too, the kiss that portrayed Jesus by Judas. Candler School of Theology professor Ed Phillips is perhaps the world's foremost authority on the subject of holy kissing. And it was the focus of his doctoral dissertation. It's interesting to me that you can do dissertations of all kinds of things. But under the topic, Holy Kiss, in the new Westminster Dictionary of Liturgy and Worship, Dr. Phillips shares the history of this ritual act. The ritual, act, the ritual kiss actually functions in many different religious groups, from the ancient world to modern day. Artwork throughout human his, recorded history has included scenes of bl people blowing kisses to the gods. Icons in Eastern Orthodox tradition show enormous wear from the generations of worshipers who expressed adoration of the icons by kissing these icons because they are holy objects. The practice of kissing was lightly, likely initiated by disciples of Jesus who offered their ritual sign of peace and reconciliation not to the gods, but to one another. After all, you can't kiss somebody you don't like, right? You have to have reconciliation. You can like them again. Phillips further says that in the Jewish world, male kissing was normally limited to family members. The fact that the disciples adopted this practice among persons, both male and female, who were not related by blood, signified a new kind of family made by the covenant with Christ, 
Again, likewise with Judas' use of the kiss as a sign of betrayal suggests that the kiss of peace was an expected greeting in the burgeoning community of Christ. And similarly, Phillips notes an article that greeting of the peace be with you combined with breathing on them in today's text from the Gospel of John may in fact allude to the same practice. Was the breathing an air kiss from Jesus? An ancient fair la bis from Jesus to his frightened disciples. Hopefully my French is okay. So, Jesus kisses his disciples and continues to kiss us today. Through his sharing of peace, Jesus helps our hearts to be made glad. Glad that he is alive. Glad that we have life in him. This peace is not saying good morning to someone. It is taking the power that Jesus gives us to share with the world and with each other through, our, uh, we ought, through each other through our brokenness and through our own wounds. We may be wounded, but we have been renewed and reborn again by the grace of our Lord. When we share the peace, we offer ourselves as a part of Christ's risen body. Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. And if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Dr. Chester writes about this. She says, This is why it's so critical that we don't come into the community of faith holding grudges. We don't come to the Lord's table holding grudges. We don't go to our graves holding grudges. No, we let all things go in the name of Jesus Christ. We speak of the saving power of forgiveness that Jesus was talking about through our words and actions. We come to all of these spaces and to all of God's people, bearing the wounds of our Savior and responding not with anger, fear, and judgment, but rather by reaching out with open hands open hearts and open minds to offer God's invitation of peace and reconciliation to everyone. So it's time to remember that when we greet one another, it is through the sharing of peace that only Jesus can give. Imagine the world watching us sharing signs of peace and reconciliation. The world actually might want to get involved with us because they in the world need peace and desire it too. So the disciples are perhaps starting to get what it means that Jesus is resurrected, that this kiss is empowering, this breath is empowering, and they're ready to go. And they tell the wonderful news of Jesus' resurrection to Thomas. And of course, I can imagine what's going on in Thomas. He immediately begins to think, how is this possible? Don't rend my heart open again. I'm still coming to terms with the death of Jesus. So Thomas issues the challenge. He says, I got to touch Jesus where the nail marks are, where the spear mark is. I have to do that. That's the only way they'll accept what you're telling me. Now we should be hard on Thomas because in my view, it's okay to have moments where our faith may be faltering, where we may have doubts. Doubting can actually lead to a deepening of faith. Because as we read, they were all together again, still in that same room, which tells me that they still probably haven't got it quite yet, that they need to get out of that room and into the world. But this time, Thomas is with them. And this time, Thomas gets to do what he wants to do, and he says, my Lord and my God. He acknowledges that. He finally comes. His doubts are assuaged. He has a glad heart. Friends, we all should be having glad hearts that we should always be listening to how Jesus is speaking to us, how Jesus continues to breathe upon us. Let us hear him calling us and commissioning us, just like the disciples, telling them to go out into the world everywhere and always to breathe God's reconciling, forgiving love into this world. Let's hope we can do that, 
especially in the times that we face today. It's my hope that we can. Amen. And now it is time to take our virtual offering. Here are the plates. Now let us pray. Beloved God, we ask that you accept our gifts to you, our tithes, our offerings, in whatever form they might be, either through electronics or through the mail. But please now bless them, that the work of the church can continue, that we can be that body of Christ filled with peace and reconciliation to share with the world. So thank you, God, for the ways that you bless us, help us to be a blessing to others. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, friends, let us take some time to offer ourselves in prayer for God. And again, no, I'll leave time open for you to, to say the names of loved ones or situations that you're concerned about within our world. Let's now go to prayer. Lord, we come to you this day seeking peace and release from our fears and our darkness. We know that you are here with us, guiding, healing, and loving us. Help us to reach out to others with the same love you give to us. Make us people who bring words of compassion and hope, actions of help and loving kindness to all we meet. Place our feet on the pathway of life, offering ourselves and our gifts for your holy realm. We now ask, O oh God, that you would listen to our petitions as we share our prayer concerns of people we know and love and situations in the world. We now lift those to you. Our families, our church, Doctors and nurses, first responders, healthcare workers. And now, beloved God, we ask, we ask that you would indeed surround all those named and situations bring the right blessings that are needed and help those, of course, who are in need. 
And God, continue to encourage us to grow and learn about ministries of reconciliation and compassion. And when we falter, pick us up. When we fail, remind us that you believe in us. And when we turn and run because of our fear, bring us home again. We ask all of this in Jesus' name, who with you and the Holy Spirit live and reign, one God forever and ever, and who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It is my hope that you'll continue again to make those hands clean, that you'll practice safe social distances, that you will do your best to be a people of compassion to all that you meet. And while you're doing that, of course, make sure you laugh a lot. Make sure you have as much fun as you can this side of the galaxy. Make sure that you live in Christ, that you enjoy life. Be at peace. Now go in peace. Have a blessed week. Amen.